super fun stuff. Today I'm going to show you how I modeled the Oogie Boogie Kid named Beryl from the movie Nightmare Before Christmas. First, let's see what he looks like in detail. From the pictures, we can see that Beryl is fairly simplistic. Beryl is one of three Oogie Boogie henchmen, and he is the one in the skeleton suit, if you didn't already know. Beryl's head is almost a perfect sphere, with a spherical mask on it and half circle ears poking out. His hair is this messy, spiky, slick back look. His body is short and stocky with loose clothing. If you look at his hands and feet, each hand has four fingers and each foot has three toes. So lucky for us, there isn't too much detail to model. I always search online to find if someone already has created this 3D model. So I don't have to in the end. I did however find the toys that they made when the movie came out in the 90s. Some other sculpted figurines and a lot of fan art. This guy definitely has gotten a lot of love but the 3D printer community is lacking, so let's change that up. To model barrel, I use sculptures. If you've seen some of my other videos, then you know how this tool works. Like with most models, I start with his head. Amazingly, sculpture starts out with a sphere, which is the perfect shape for barrel's head. So I start to map out the features using the creasing tool. I mark spots for his eyes, teeth, and nose holes. I then indent the eye holes to give it a mask-like appearance. For the eyes, I try to sculpt them out, but decide that since they are perfect spheres anyways, just to make them separate sphere objects. Next, I outline the mask around the face and give it more detail. I shrink the back of his head down to give it the appearance that the mask is sitting on his face. Ears are added and then the hair is drawn on. To do the hair, I use the draw tool first to make the individual clumps. Then I use the crease tool to make them into little spikes. Surprisingly, this worked great and it took little time to do. After a little cleanup with some of the face parts, I start to create the body out of a new object. At first when I designed this character, I thought to make him lying down. At this point, with the body I turned off symmetry and freehand every part. Each arm and leg were modeled separately, because I think it's a little easier for this type of model. Sculptress is a little limited in moving parts, like posing legs and arms. Other modeling tools you would create a base model and add an underlining skeleton to pose him. But this is for 3D printing only, and that would take more time than it's worth. With the body sculpted, I add another object for his butt and legs. I get the legs in a kid-like pose and purposely do not sculpt the feet out of this part. Since he has baggy pants, it made more sense to keep them separate. Two more objects were added to create each of the feet. I then add the arms. For this, I take the body object and extend each arm out. I don't add the arms as separate objects because I wanted the shirt to be smooth, with a perfect transition. I get one arm done and add another object to create the hand. Then I look at the other arm and decide to have him in a pose where he looks like he's going to hit something. I add the second hand to the newly created arm and this time make a fist as if he's holding something. At this point, I didn't know what I wanted him to hold, but his grip would be about the same with most items. Lastly, I go around and extrude the bones from his shirt and pants. I could have panned these on instead, but I think this way gives a cool claymation-y look to the character. After I finished modeling him, I decided that his pose wasn't right, mainly that it covered up his face and all the cool details that I made. I reoriented him vertically and changed a few things. I then put him in the mesh mixer and added the mace. In my last video, I went over how to fix sculptress models for printing by making a model completely solid. I followed the same steps as I described in that video. I then printed him, painted him, and displayed him. I painted him the same way I paint everything, using acrylic paints and shades for the details. Sanding him took a lot of effort, because of all those little details. His mace was a lot of fun to do. I gave it a super rusty look. Maybe in a future video I'll show you how to use pigments and to create rust effects. With the mace, I thought it would be fun to give him his iconic lollipop. So I took a toothpick and some epoxy putty and made it. It only took a few minutes to do. After that, I put him in a pumpkin candy dish and on display. So far everyone loves him and turned out to be a perfect addition to Halloween. I may even leave him out till Christmas since the movie has two holidays in it. Hope you enjoyed this video and I have more to come. Remember to follow me here and on Twitter or Patreon. Links below. Also, I just reopened my Etsy store, so be on the lookout for cool stuff as I sell them on there, some of which you might see in these videos. Cheers!